there's a 2023 Civic Type R. It's only got 300 miles. He just picked it up. They're amazing little race cars, but they got four doors, so you can put your kids in them too. <laughs> and believe me, your kids will probably love it. Now, they only make a limited amount of these, so there's one big drawback, and that's the price, all right? They list for around 40 something well yeah okay he paid 60 for this you're gonna pay money i saw people on the east coast pay over 75 grand for these things they aren't cheap but if you can get them at least close to msrp you're gonna do okay because these things are already collector's items when you buy them brand new most people don't put that many miles on them what's behind these things is all the technology that honda's got and it is a real miniature race car the red color isn't just for show <laughs> these things really go i do like the red brembo brakes though it does set them off but the main thing of course is under the hood there it is the two liter four cylinder type r screaming race engine it is a two liter engine so it's not a tiny engine and it is a honda so they've proven so far to be extremely reliable as long as you change the oil frequently it's not like you got a little 1.1 or 1.3 liter three-cylinder engine with a turbo that's going to blow itself up honda's been making turbocharged engines along with their acura brand they're still honda's for quite some time for decades and they've got it pretty much bulletproof now this little bitty engine puts out 315 horsepower out of two liters i remember when they used to say, oh, it'll be a miracle if we ever get 100 horsepower per liter. Well, this gets a lot more than 100 horsepower per liter, and it can take it. Really a phenomenal bit of engineering that Honda's putting out here. And much to Honda's kudos, these aren't like Toyota where, oh, their sports car is a rebadged BMW or it's a rebadged Subaru. This is a Honda. Honda makes them, and they hold up. As we go inside here, you'll see made in japan and as we go inside it's got a nice cockpit <laughs> solid door of course it's a six speed individual setup sport got your automatic charger for your phone just lay it down there nice charging usb ports really comfortable racing seats man i could just sit here all day not even moving and having fun and as we go to the back yes it does have back seats and this one's back pretty far in the front and there's still a lot of room now the early type r's not so much room in the back the whole family came in this thing it's comfortable it's not like the earlier ones it's less insane race interior and more comfy now here's some interesting information you can see it was assembled in japan and the transmission came from japan but the engine was made in usa in ohio make the engines in ohio and let's face the facts you're not going to get too many 315 horsepower engines that could get 28 miles a gallon on the highway of course that's if you keep it in six gear going 55 60 miles an hour if you can control yourself this little engine can get decent gas mileage if you drive it like i drive you'd probably get more like 10. <laughs> and that's real gas mileage figures because when I had Mustangs, Ford used to give me Mustangs before they got mad at me for saying bad things about them. They'd be rated for 20 something miles a gallon on a highway and I was getting like nine or 10. This thing really can get 28 miles a gallon. Now for a little bit of Civic, check it out. You can fit a couple of people in here if you wanted to. There's a lot of room, but of course when the seats go back, you can actually carry stuff with it. You bring some sheetrock or something, you can fit it in here and slide it around. Better stay the heck away from speed bumps and potholes, cause these are low profile tires, baby. Yes, they handle like mad, but they will also break and shatter if you hit big potholes, so. He paid 1200 bucks extra for the insurance. So if the rims break, the tires break, they gotta replace them for free. And believe you me, if you're gonna get a setup like this, you better well pay for that because doesn't matter where you live the roads are full of potholes the roads here in Tennessee are much better than the pothole filled ones when I go to Rhode Island but still you're driving around it doesn't take much to destroy these low profile tires and these very expensive rims so you can buy one of these do buy the insurance normally I'm dust against those insurance things but the tires they can't wheedle their way out of it because if they break in their bent they got to replace them that's 
that's what the insurance is for. They can't say, you're not covered for that pothole, it was too big. They gotta pay out. All the customers I ever had that bought those, not a single one has been refused to get tires or rims when they break, when they paid for that insurance. So if you're gonna drive these, you really should buy that, or you're gonna be buying a whole bunch of tires and rims, and you'll wish you'd bought the insurance. So it's got a warranty on the wheels and tires for five years or 60,000 miles. And from my experience with these things, most guys, they don't wanna to put too many miles on them, so probably five years will come before the 60,000 miles. But it's something you really gotta think about. Normally, I don't like those warranties, but in this case, you better get one if you drive them on regular roads full of potholes. So let's take it for a spin. It does have one of these stupid electric parking brakes, which yeah. I hate, but what can you do? It's got a really nice backup camera. And here we go, you can see, you got a lot of gauge information. Check it out. It's pretty cool, and you can play around with that to your heart's content. Got the big speedometer in the middle, reading digitally, and the tack to the left, so you get your information really fast. You don't take your eyes off the road much. Now realize, it is a Type R, so you're gonna feel the road. This is a racing car. This isn't a smooth riding car. <laughs> if you want a Civic that's got a smoother ride, get a Civic Si. You're gonna pay a lot less money and you'll be happier with the smoother ride. But of course, it doesn't go anything like what this thing is gonna do. Now he's got in a comfort zone here, so we're gonna mess around with the drive mode and we're gonna put it in the sport mode instead. We wanna have some fun. We don't care if it's bumpy. Anyways, this road isn't too bumpy. You can hear that engine kick in. We're gonna do type R mode and look at all the cool graphics, but it's more than that. Here we go to our little racetrack in the sky. We're only headed there, but we'll be there soon. And there's no one behind us, so we'll come to a little stop and we'll wait till that guy's a little bit further ahead of us. <laughs> and here we go. This thing is fun to drive. Woo! <laughs> Listen to that engine. And yeah, as I said, we're bouncing around a little, even though it's a smooth road, because we got it in the heart. This is for driving like a race car. This thing is tight, I can just feel it. We had the traction control on. Well, now we've turned it off, so. But I gotta tell you, I could just drive all day long listening to that engine. It's got a nice sound. Who would think a four-cylinder engine would sound so good? Oh, listen to that thing. Basically, I'll never buy this car <laughs> because I'd end up in jail. So a whole lot of fun to be having these, especially when you put them in the plus R. Check it out. Nothing is shaking. It's got all that power, but it's like a kitten purring away when it's just sitting there idling. You can barely even tell the engine's going. Now, don't be fooled by their suggested list price because he paid a little over 60 grand for this thing. But if you've got 60 grand burning a hole in your pocket, let me tell you, it's not a bad investment because as long as you keep full insurance in case you run into a tree or something, these things will keep their value. They don't make that many of them. They're going for well over MSRP. And as you've seen, they are screaming monsters to drive around if you want them to be that way. Or you can put them on a comfort setting and get a decent ride and get 28 miles a gallon. I mean, where else are you gonna get a screaming race car that you could take the family around in and put it in a comfort mode? It's a Honda, those two liter engines are notorious for lasting forever. Even though it's turbocharged, hey, Honda knows what they're doing. And like I said, this is a unique vehicle. It's gonna keep its value. The Civic Type R's keep their value. They've sold them worldwide for a long time, 1997. They've only started selling them recently in the United States and they all sell out. They're very hard to find. He was on a waiting list since July of last year. <laughs> and he said there were probably still 50 people in front of him, but the guy said, hey, I got one, we'll come look at it. And he bought it. So if you're looking for a little bitty race car that you can use as an everyday driver and you don't mind forking out 60 grand, <laughs> Hey, that wouldn't be a bad idea, really. You can have fun. You're not gonna lose money like in a normal car because they depreciate so fast. These things, they haven't so far, and I don't think they're going to in the future either because they don't make that many of them. It's a very specialized market that they're going for. Uh, hey, you get a two for one. You can drive your family around, and when they're not around, you can drive like an absolute maniac. Now Subaru's been making Outback since 1995. They used to look like station wagons. Now they're SUVs. 
Here's a 2022 Outback Wilderness. They're relatively popular. When they first sold in the first year, oh, they only sold like 15,000, but they sold over 100,000 every year now, like clockwork in the United States. So there's gotta be something behind them. Now you start out, you can see it's good looking. He added those cool lights in the grill, but this has the one inch lift kit on it. One inch isn't gonna hurt anything. Beautiful blue, and I like the fender wells like it because this is, like all Subarus, all-wheel drive. This guy isn't one of those yuppies that's buying one and taking the kids to a soccer match. He actually takes it off-road. <laughs> and they are off-road capable. They're not like a show off-road. They can actually be taken off-road if you want to. Now, most people want something like this. They want a reliable vehicle. So, it's a four-cylinder engine. Now, it's also turbocharged. You can see the intercooler there. Now, as we all know, I'm not a big fan of turbochargers on gasoline engines because they wear out faster. In this case, you're going to get so much more torque when you're driving down the road. It's a worthwhile thing. These engines don't have head gasket problems like they used to. The original ones are made in Japan. You can see this one is made in the USA. But, I mean, let's face the facts. The engine and the transmission still made in Japan. You know, they're just putting them together here. So, you know, they're, they're solid built. There's no arguing that. We're saying it's got the electronic parking brake. Most companies are going to that. Very comfortable seats. Nice black interior. I like the touch of the little gold on the steering. Nice small steering wheel. Nice control. And for an off-roader, hey, you might want to stick your head out if you're hunting deer, so <laughs> it's got a sunroof too. And as you can see in the back, lots of leg room, right? And again, solid. Open the back, it's also got a good sized trunk. It's kind of like a miniature station wagon. The early ones, like I said, station wagons, they morphed into SUVs, but you can put the seats down, look at all the stuff you could haul. Now they got a trailer at their house and It'll tow 3,500 pounds. Not bad for a four-cylinder engine. It is turbocharged after all. Now, if you want, this is a wilderness after all. It'll hold 800 pounds on the top, so you can put a ton up there if you want, as long as you don't have three guys that weigh 300 pounds each. <laughs> of course, they're not going to be climbing up there anyway. This sounds like a typical Subaru boxer engines. They have a unique sound, just like the Volkswagen Beetle. They haven't had head gasket problems in decades. They're solid built. Like I said, I'm not a fan of the turbos, but if you're going to go off-road, you don't want to get stuck in places, and you're towing stuff like he is, they do come in handy, and he does change his oil a lot. We'll see what happens over time, but from my experience with these, they can last quite some time because these aren't like the WRXs where the kids drive the heck out of it and destroy the things. You get one of these off-road stuff. You don't off-road at 120 miles an hour, you know? You take your time when you're off-road. Unless you want to go over the cliff on the edge, which wouldn't be a smart move. You can see the fuse they added for a fancier stereo system. Now, this is a CVT transmission, but it has the fake gears to it if you want to shift it that way. So we're going to take it for a little road test. The owner of this road tested the CVT's four or five years ago, and he didn't like it. He owned a Subaru before this one, too. And he tried out... It was a really old one. He tried out the CVT and one four or five years ago and he didn't like it. But he said he likes this one a lot better. So we'll see how it does. It's got a nice backup camera, nice pixelation there. And you can see it does kind of fake shifting. It doesn't have gears, but I have to say it's a vast improvement over the older Subaru CVTs. As is the handling. It's got nice handling. We're gonna take it to our little drag strip in the sky. Seats are really comfortable. And I love this steering wheel. It's a nice small steering wheel. Lots of room for big guys so the legs don't hit it. And they're more fun driving. Power steering set up perfect for this all-wheel drive system. Doesn't oversteer, doesn't understeer. Now I was thinking about buying a Mazda CX-9, but he likes the more space in this. And it was 10 grand more for the Mazda. I think he made a wise decision. He's got his phone hooked up so he can do whatever he wants. And he just put it in sport mode. So here we go, off to our little drag strip. Well, there's somebody behind us, but we're stopping because it's my neighbor and his Hummer. So, here we go. We're gonna race him. Oh, <laughs> he didn't know we were racing. So, here we go, we'll start all over again. <laughs> he went to pass me. He didn't realize I was doing my drag strip. So, here we go. And there's a the turbo kicking in. Nice sound. And really, now if you would have blindfolded me and told me it had an automatic transmission in it, 
I might have thought so because it does have those fake gear shifts in it, which makes it much more fun to drive. You noticed it wasn't a typical CVT that will just redline all the way to 6,500 and stay there. No, it goes up and down. I gotta say, in terms of drivability, this CVT is much more drivable. Now, time will show if it holds up, but uh, they haven't had any problems that I've seen yet with them. And this one's a year old. And of course, it's got line avoidance and saw someone coming up the hill and if I go over the line it's gonna beep at us there it is lane departure warning warning now again it's turbo so look we're going 40 let's punch it can you pass people certainly can pass people look at that and the transition down was good now if he's driving normal he gets about 26 miles a gallon on a highway not like I'm driving now so you consider you got a turbo it's got a lot of zip all-wheel drive it is an suv they are somewhat higher in the air so they'll get a little bit worse gas mod that's good gas mod for an off-road capable vehicle if you ask anybody who has off-road capable vehicles some of them get like six seven miles a gallon like the phones check it out you can see what the all-wheel drive system's doing play around with that the auto stop i like the idea that you can turn it off i find that one of the most annoying things on top of it wearing your engine out faster i really do have to say i'm presently surprised by the cvt where See, it acts like it's got gears, it's acting like a shift, and it doesn't. And if you really want to go, you can put it in manual mode and fiddle with yourself with these cool little paddle shifters here. Now, a lot of times, those are just toys for people to screw around with. But in this case, they have practical functions. You go off-road, you can put them as low as it goes and play with it manually, so you're not going to get stuck in the sand or the mud. Now, you notice his turn signal clicks a little fast. Well, he put LEDs. I didn't put any belts resistors in it yet, so that's his next project. Now, as I said, this is off-road capable, and these all have waterproof coatings on them, so you get wet and dirty, well, you can hose it out, you don't have to worry about it. So there you have it, 2022 Outback. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. I am not a turbo fan, but I can see the reason behind having a turbo on this. If you're going to take care of it, change the oil a lot, you're gonna have a lot more torque if you're taking it off-road and it certainly has much better passing ability than the normally aspirated ones have the biggest surprise to me was the cvt transmission hey that thing really surprised me it acted more like an automatic transmission the engineers at subaru are on stupid they're just like toyota they see hey what do people want do they want something that goes like a motorboat or do they want something that goes and up down and shifts even though it's not really shifty it feels like it is and it has a much better feel than flooring and it's just rev and you can feel the slippage this you really don't i was impressed i gotta say they seem to have this cvt down i haven't seen any problems with them yet we'll see in four or five years but it has a feel that it's going to hold up better and like this is year old i hadn't had any problems yet and it still works perfectly fine as the owner reminded me it was 10 grand less than the mazda cx9 but it has more room inside it so a new Ford Maverick Lariat. The guy was waiting 15 months and he finally got it. It was a long wait. Now, was it worth the wait? Well, he's happy with it, especially his wife's happy with it. So we're gonna go through it and show you what they have, what you get. Ford first said they're making these Mavericks. They said they're gonna sell a pickup truck for under $20,000. Well, let's not hold our breaths on that one because is what this one went for. $35,215. Now, I don't even call that close to $20,000 myself, but realize one thing. Even the F-150s, they say, here's the list price, right? Okay, last year, the average price of an F-150 that people actually paid, there's guys that research it, and it was like $61,500. Well, they say their lowest price is $29,640, but the average one that was sold in the U.S. last year went for like $61,500. So, be leery of these. Catch you with low prices and then come in. Don't listen to the advertising hype. In this case, they're a little bit on the sneaky side, because if you look at this, what does it say? Manufactured by Ford. It just says Ford, right? But what you look at is this, three, number three. Three means it's made in Mexico. So it's made in Mexico. I mean, it used to have, they say Baja de California on some of them. So you'd think it was California, but it's Baja, California, Mexico. Well, in this case, they're kind of being sneaky. They're not telling you, but yeah. 
that are put together in Mexico. My son's TRD Tacoma, it was made in Mexico too and it's perfectly fine. It has a one, two, three, four cylinder gasoline engine and a hybrid motor and a battery pack. He's getting 40 miles a gallon in town around Madisonville and he's getting 32 on the highway. Now, a lot of people said, Oh, well, that's not phenomenal, but really, come on now, it's a pickup truck. <laughs> the last Ford pickup truck I worked on got 16 miles a gallon tops. It was an Explorer, an older one, right? So, you can get 40 miles a gallon in a little pickup truck. That's something. And speaking of little, that's one of the two main reasons he bought the truck. His wife didn't like their Ranger, it was too big. They've grown like everything else into bigger trucks, right? She didn't like it and she didn't like how it rode. They're kind of rough riding. Well, she likes this size. It's not outrageously high, so she can easily get it out, but it's not like it's a low rider and you're gonna drag on the ground. But the big deal with this hybrid is, it's front wheel drive. As you can see, the drive shafts are in the front and in the back. You can see there's no differential, no drive shafts, but, you can also see it's got independent suspension in the back. And even though it's an economy vehicle, it has a spare tire look. An actual spare tire. With this front wheel drive, independent suspension, this rides much more like a car than it does like a truck. So it looks like a truck, but it really kind of rides like a car. We'll see when we drive it around. I've tried them before and they all really surprised me how well they drove. Now people are always worried about quality control for Mexico, so let's take a look around. And let's check fit. I mean, the paint is phenomenal. Here's the fit. Let's look at the other side. Well, it's exactly the same. A lot better than a Tesla. Doors are the same. What do they sound like? Sounds pretty solid to me. Check the other side. Nice and solid. No rattling. Airbags all over the place. Comfortable seats. Now, not outrageously large inside. It is a compact truck. It's not like a F-150. You can have a football game in the back seats, but still. It's got computer power outlets, 120 volt with 400 watt max because it's a hybrid. So you can put out more power. 120 volts there. It's a compact truck, so it's got a relatively compact bed, but you're not buying this to haul a bunch of junk. Got nice alloy wheels. Decent sized rear disc brakes too. So if you can buy a pickup truck that your wife likes to drive and ride in, that is a big thing. Everybody keeps thinking bigger, bigger, bigger. That's why he got rid of the Ranger. Even the Ranger was too big. And an F-150 was totally out of the question, right? There's a lot of people that are happy with a smaller pickup truck. And if they've never driven one of these, my advice is just go road test one to see how they ride. But as the owner said, if you can find one, cause he did wait you know, a year and a half to get a hold of his because they just weren't making them fast enough. Now it is a hybrid with a four cylinder gasoline engine. A lot of people are wondering about hybrids. Ford's been making these hybrids for quite some time. I had many customers with Ford hybrids and they were happy with them. Eventually they broke, but I mean, most of them broke down when they had 200,000 miles or more on them. So it's not like they're gonna fall apart in front of your very eyes. As we go inside, nice little copper touch on the inside door handle there. Really solid sound. We'll start her up. Of course, it won't make any noise because it's a hybrid vehicle. <laughs> it won't make any noise until we start to run it. Since it's hybrid, everything's automatic, electronic. The transmission's all electronic. The parking brake's electronic. It's got a decent screen. It's got a remote charger here. You don't have to plug it in. If you got a phone that will accept direct charging without plugging it in. And the screen doesn't bother your view. It's not blocking. Like some of those Toyotas, the screens go way up. I find them annoying. This fits in there. Very comfy. Nice comfy padded armrest. And yeah, there's no sunroof, but really, come on, it's a pickup truck. Do they really need sunroofs? They got plates for your sunglasses, that's good enough. Play with the settings and everything on the screen. It's got a decent touch screen. Look, it all works fine. Lots of hand controls on the steering wheel, cruise control, stereo system. You can go through the whole menu system. So of course you're gonna wonder how this thing drives, we'll take it for a spin. It's a hybrid, if you never drove one, well, you gotta get it kind of used to it, cause now, it's just operating on battery power. We don't need AC, we don't need anything. There. This is one quiet truck, except it's gotta make this noise, cause it has to warn people. The only thing is, if I heard this noise, I wouldn't know, what am I looking for? Like, is it a lost cow with a bell ringing? I don't know, what a strange sound. But isn't the engine clunking because it has a problem? <laughs>
And like I said, okay, it's a truck, but really, it handles a lot more like a car. That independent suspension, we can get the bumps. You don't really feel it. Now the engine's kicking in because we're going faster. Now it's regenerating electricity. Got some zip to it for a little truck. And of course, if you're not used to hybrids, you got to get used to the odd noises. And like, like, here's the regenerating brakes. Woo! They make odd noises. 100% energy return. Gives you all the stories here. A hybrid front wheel drive Ford pickups going out to the country. Country hasn't seen too many of these things yet. Now comes the true test. It is a Ford pickup. Would Bonnie and Clyde be happy using one of these to rob banks with? I don't know. Let's find out. Here we go. On your mark. Get set. Go. Now it's a CVT transmission, so of course, it doesn't have gears to shift. And it's not a race truck by any stretch of the imagination, but hey, it got going 60 miles an hour pretty quick. It's the gas mods at these things and a smooth ride. It's a smaller truck, smaller wheelbase, but it doesn't ride like say a Ford Ranger or an old Ford pickup truck like a Courier that just had springs in the back and a solid diff and every time you hit bumps, the fillings would come out of your teeth. It's got a nice smooth ride and like I said, you step on the gas, you can pass people. Look, it picks up pretty quickly because the electric boost motor puts out a lot of torque so you can pass. That's how it gets better gas mileage in the city, but when you gotta pass somebody, step on the gas, hey, the corn starts flying by a lot faster pretty quick. So it's now going on electric miles. We've gone 1.1 electric miles. And the gas mileage is going up because we're running out of electricity now. Of course, the gas mileage will stink with me driving it because I'm driving it hard just to show you what it can do. But again, when we get to the twisties, hey, this thing drives more like a car than a truck. No under oversteer, this thing is smooth. Being a hybrid, since it's got the hybrid system, when you do come to a stop, the engine turns off too. So it's really quiet. Other than that fan that's running, how quiet it is. We'll see how the transition is when we take off. Here we go. Fast transition, you really feel the lag. Hybrids transition a lot faster than those stop and go internal combustion engines where it just turns off. So it's a lot smoother transition and it's a lot less wear on the vehicle. I don't hear any odd road noise. It looks like they put this together pretty well in Mexico. I don't hear rattling stuff. Now, of course, this vehicle is new. It's only got 358 miles on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we don't know what the test of time is going to do, but hey, this guy just lives down the road. So as time goes on, we'll check out with him to see how it's holding up over the years. If I last another 10 years, we'll see how this thing's lasting in another 10 years. But really, it's a very smooth riding little pickup truck, and a lot of that has to do with the front wheel drive system. You're not going to get the fish tailing you get with the rear wheel pickup truck, or the rear wheels are going to spin, you're going to be drifting too much. This handles the road quite well. Well, I'll take the corner. Easy turns. You don't have to worry about it all swinging around because it's gripping in the front. The engine, the transmission is in the front so it can pull its own weight. You don't have the rear slipping tires like you do in a regular pickup truck. Now, fans are doing burnouts aren't going to like it, but regular drivers are going to love it. Where can you get a little pickup truck and get 40 miles a gallon in town and handle so well and ride so smoothly? Here we go on a big corner. I didn't even slow down, and I didn't feel like I was losing anything. Check it out. We're just sitting there. The world's quietest pickup truck. It's running while well, it's sitting on battery power. We'll turn it off now. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm happy that Ford made these and they got the four-cylinder hybrid in it. They didn't make them with the stupid three-cylinder. Originally, they were talking about putting those three-cylinder turbos in them, and I thought, that's going to be the world's biggest mistake. They're going to blow up. They have all kinds of problems with them, right? No, four-cylinder inline gasoline engine hooked up to a hybrid system. Gets phenomenal gas mileage in town and 32 on a highway. That's pretty good for a pickup truck that rides as well as this does because the engine transmission is all in the front on top of the drive wheels. Plenty of weight on the drive wheels so they don't slip, so they pull themselves. Vehicles pull themselves better than they push themselves. That's why most vehicles are front wheel drive these days. When you're pushing from the back, Babies are going to slide all over the place, especially in the winter, snow. What's in the back of a pickup truck? Nothing. <laughs> in the very back, hardly any weight. A lot of guys will put a bunch of weight in the winter just so they don't slide around. You don't even have to think about it. It's front wheel drive. And yes, they're made in Mexico. I don't see any quality controls with this particular one. It's brand new. We'll see what happens this time passes on. 
But as it stands now, it's solid built. It's built a lot better than a Tesla. All the panels meet. The paint was done phenomenally. It's a beautiful paint job. Like I said, with the F-150s, you're supposed to be able to get one for $29,500. And the average F-150 in the United States sold for over 61 grand. So 30 some grand for a little truck that rides like this. You consider the average new car today cost over $50,000. If you want a truck that kind of drives like a car, but you want to have a little truck, definitely at least check one of these things out. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.